Hello beautiful, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bettina and I'm the makeup enthusiast. In today's video, we are getting a little bit shady. We're getting a little bit controversial. I am bringing you my list of the ugliest palettes released in 2021. This is all a little bit of fun. So if you do enjoy these palettes or you think the color stories are very nice and pretty, then don't get offended. We're, we're just having a little bit of fun here. I have 15 on the list. I think some of these might shock you. Um, you might agree with some of them. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And while you are down there, I hope you would consider subscribing down below so you can keep up to date on all of my fun beauty content that I do release. I am doing three videos a week throughout December, as well as my weekly live stream on Sundays. So I would love it if you would consider subscribing and join us um, on the adventure. <laughs> And without further ado, let's jump on into it. Let me scooch to the side so you can have some viewing area of what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to start off with a bang. We're starting off with a bang. We are starting off with the NYX Cosmetics and Tetris collection for 2021. Uh, just the eyeshadow palette. That's all I'm really talking about in this video is ugly eyeshadow palettes, ugly color stories to me. So this is the NYX Tetris palette. To start off with, I think this palette is far too big. And then to go further, I just feel like they have really failed with the design and setup of this palette. I think it would have been really cool if they formatted this palette in a way where they grouped like color stories together or did like little mini monochromatic color stories in the palette and they marked them out as each of like the individual shapes that you get in the Tetris game. I think that would have been so, so cool. As it stands, it's kind of a little bit of a jumbled mess. It's a huge palette. I don't think it needs to be that big and I just think that it's a little bit of a fail. It just doesn't look great. Next is this embarrassment of a palette. <laughs> this is the Ciate I Am A Woman palette. Now I read this palette to filth when it first came out and I'm gonna do it all over again. I think this palette is an absolute joke. I think Ciate should be really embarrassed with themselves for releasing this. In this palette, they have done a color story. It's quite a pink tone color story as well. Um, they've done a color story and each individual eyeshadow is the name of like a really famous woman in history. So the whole idea of the palette is to like inspire and celebrate like forward, think forward thinking women throughout history. However, I just don't think that it's been done very well. On top of that, the Ciate formula is generally quite shit. Um, and I just think it's a little bit of an embarrassment. I think they could have stuck with this same theme, but chosen better colors to represent the women that they chose. I think the colors that they chose to represent such inspiring and uh, forward thinking women is a little bit disappointing, somewhat disrespectful as well in some cases. They could have still stuck to the idea but executed it a lot better than what they've done. It's just an embarrassment. They should be so ashamed of themselves. I just think this palette, it's its disrespectful to some of these amazing women. And you know, there's also women in here that kind of stuck it to the men and went against the norm and different things like that and defining them as like a boring beige or a boring like light pale pink uh I, no no it's so disgraceful but the next one is another one that i kind of read to filth a little bit this is the coach collection and it's in collaboration with sephora in this collection, they released a lot of stuff with these kind of like, there's a shark palette, there's a dinosaur palette, there's also a unicorn palette. Each of the palettes have like a little clip on the end, so you can use them as like a handbag charm. And then inside there is this really embarrassing color story as well. Yes, yeah, so we have the Rexy eyeshadow palette, we have the Uni face palette, 
and the Sharky eyeshadow palette. And I don't know, I just think it looks really cheap. It looks really childish and I'm not here for it. It's just not my style. I don't put charms on my handbag. So I'm just not a big fan of this collection. I just think it's, it just looks really childish. I think it looks really ugly and tacky. I'm, I'm not a fan. Oh, speaking of embarrassment, what a joke. So this is the Rush limited the sugar rush which is tarts like sister slash baby brand um this is the sugar rush positive energy vegan eyeshadow palette in this palette we have lots of negative space if you've been here for any amount of time you know i hate negative space in palettes it's just a waste i i just prefer palettes that look a little bit more uniform they utilize the space a bit better and this palette i think if the shadows got rearranged slightly you probably could have cut down the size of the palette just a little bit as well on top of that it comes with this like clear um it's not clear but it's like slightly colored plastic lid and to me, this looks like one of those cheap plastic lids that will very easily crack or shatter, go crazy um, and even split. I just think this looks really, really cheap and tacky. The eyeshadows themselves don't look like they have all that great color payoff. And I just, I don't think a lot of people <laughs> would have picked this one up. There was something else about this one just say it has diamond powder in it. Oh, that's right. Positive vibes only. Balance your chakra. <laughs> Balance your chakra with our new limited edition Sugar Rush Positive Energy Vegan Eyeshadow Palette. So this palette, if you use it, your, all your chakras are going to be aligned. You're going to have a fantastic time. Like life is going to be grand for you if you use this palette. Oh gosh. <laughs> Next is a collaboration with Hip Dot, and I tried to limit the amount of Hip Dot collaborations that I included in this video. This collection here, or this eyeshadow palette here, gets into this list, gets onto this list mainly for the packaging. And that's because it comes with this like shag lid. This is the Hip Dot Clueless collaboration. Um, they didn't do a horrible job on this collection, but the idea of this palette with the like plush, like shag, uh, lid, it just really grosses me out. And I think it looks really ugly. And I think the more that you use this palette, the uglier it's going to look, especially if you end up using like glitter glues and you still have like the remnants of it on your fingers and you're touching the, the lid of the palette or if you're using your fingers to apply any of these shadows um, and then you're going back in and touching the palette, I think that the front of this palette is going to end up like a hot mess. It's going to collect and hold on to all the powder that you have floating around in your collection. I just, from a practical point of view, I just don't think, I just don't think it really, it's going to really look good after a, a small amount of time in your collection. So yeah, she made it on the list, that one, unfortunately. <laughs> Next is another collection that released earlier in the year. This is the, um, the MAC Cosmetics Cruella <laughs> collection. In this collection, there were two eyeshadow palettes. Each eyeshadow palette only had four pans in it, but you could break up each eyeshadow palette into little duos. So they are kind of essentially cut on a bit of an angle and you can pull I had to double check that I wasn't speaking out of turn when I said that they could come apart. But yes, these palettes can either be um, duos or uh, quads. <sighs> the little drawings on these eyeshadow palettes look really, I don't know, I think they look really tacky and I it looks like a two-year-old drew them. I don't enjoy the split, I don't enjoy the color story that they've put together with the quads and even the duos. I just think it's really missed the mark and it's been thrown together a little bit haphazardly. I don't know whether anyone has even considered whether these colors go together all that well. In my opinion, they don't. I just think it's a little bit of a joke. The only thing that I really see related to Coella when it comes to these eyeshadow palettes is the black and the white split. 
and the fact that there's also a black and a white in the eyeshadow palette like that's pretty much it moving on we have the makeup revolution and brat stole collection i really cannot stand the shape of these eyeshadow palettes they're kind of like this awkward triangle shape with the top cut off what's that shape called i don't know i can't remember it's been a long time since i've studied shapes then in each of the eyeshadow palette there are these like longer shaped pans on the bottom there's also a larger eyeshadow palette where there is 12 shadows in each side and then there's like these weird oblong oval pans in the middle three in the middle same kind of shape as the bottom row in the other palettes that represent like one one of each girl uh, the color stories don't look fantastic and makeup revolution formula is really crappy so all in all i just i think they're ugly i think they're very ugly the next is the hourglass curator eyeshadow collection now these kind of are i don't know whether you can really call them an eyeshadow palette but you can either buy a five pan a three pan or a single and you custom design your own eyeshadows in each palette so it came out with a range of 40 eyeshadow palettes the main thing that i think is super duper ugly with this collection is of course the price so these eyeshadows individually in australia are 41 dollars each and then for the five pan shadow empty it's 23 australian dollars so hang on please hold so these the, for a five pan eyeshadow palette at mecca in australia it will cost you 228 dollars let me say that again 228 dollars at mecca in australia to create a five pan eyeshadow palette of hourglass shadows. Uh, no, thank you. On top of that, I heard uh, mixed reviews of the eyeshadows and I saw a lot of people when they opened, <laughs> when they opened their palettes up, the pans were like falling out. So the magnets on them is not that great, uh, but definitely the most ugliest thing about this collection is the price tag the price tag is ridiculous like there's hourglass prices and then there's this and this is ridiculous next up we have a collection from kylie and this is the uh, 24k birthday collection to celebrate kylie's 24th birthday now i will say the eyeshadow palette color story itself it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's actually quite nice. It's a very warm tone eyeshadow palette. The thing that I have an issue with is the fact that Kylie has posed half naked for a photo shoot for her to be put onto and memorialized on the front cover of the eyeshadow palette. And I don't know who in the right mind. I, I certainly don't want a half naked picture of Kylie on the front of one of my eyeshadow palettes. Some of you may. I do not want um, Kylie's overly oiled body greeting me in the morning when I open my makeup drawers to do my makeup. I just, oh, I just don't like it when brands do shit like this. I just don't think it's necessary. I think it would have been cool if it had maybe like a embossed or like a 3D kind of 24 in gold on the front of the palette or even if it was like one of those kind of perspex packaging with um, like little 24 gold pieces in them or something like that. I think that would have been far cooler than having her overly oiled body on the front of the palette. I mean, don't get me wrong, she's got a damn good body, but I just don't want to see that in my eyeshadow collection. It's just not for me. Next, we have the Urban Decay Cyber Palette. Now, I was tossing up between the Wild Wild West Palette or the Cyber Palette. Cyber Palette made it on this list because, in my opinion, I think the front packaging or the front cover of this palette looks really, really cool. Then you open the palette and you get really sadly let down the eyeshadows themselves they just don't have any depth to them i think for the theme it could have been really really cool if they um just 
put a little bit more thought in there. Some of the shadows are definitely cool, but I think they could have really put some more effort into those duo chromes. They could have added more of kind of that electronic um, cyber look that they have on the front of the palette into the eyeshadows. And I do think that it just needs a little bit more depth in the palette. It's all very like one level for me. And I think adding even a black in there would have like been able to create some more depth, but some deeper browns in there, maybe like some deeper burnt oranges would have been cool. Okay, this is the last Hip Dot collection that I've included on the list, I promise. This is the Hasbro collection. And for one, I just think that this makes it on the list because one, who wants a Play-Doh palette? Two, who wants a Ouija board palette? And three, who wants a freaking Monopoly palette? Definitely not me, not my scene, not my style. The Monopoly palette has Again, lots of wasted space, lots of empty spots there that I think it would have been really cool if they put shadows in those spots, especially where they've got like the ones on each outer corner. I think it would have been really cool if they actually put a shadow in there and put the imprint of that particular square in the pan rather than just having it as like painted cardboard. And then the Ouija board, I'm not about that. I don't want to be tempting fate and bringing that into my collection. And the Play-Doh palette, it uh, just seems a little bit childish to me. Like I'm a, a grown ass woman and this is a Play-Doh palette. Uh, why? Oh, like why? I just, why? Why is this a thing? Why is this a thing? I can like I can get the Ouija board, I can get the Monopoly palette, but the Play-Doh, I don't know. I just wrong scene, wrong scene. Not my time. <laughs> Next is a palette that I'm really sad that I'm putting on this list, but for me, the color story of the eyeshadow palette it just didn't make it for me. I had really high hopes when it came to the outer packaging. When I saw the inside of the palette, I was really disappointed and somewhat a little bit confused. This is the Menagerie Cosmetics Indigo Ink Palette. Now this is the outer packaging and as per usual, Menagerie Excel with their outer packaging. This looks absolutely gorgeous, the outer packaging. Now this is the inside of the palette. I don't really, I don't really get it. Like I don't really understand for me, when I hear the words indigo ink, I'm thinking it's going to be like a bluey purple toned palette. Whereas this here, I don't know, to me it's more reflective of, I guess, coral or something like that. If we're sticking with the ocean themes, I would say this is more along the lines of like coral inspired or even just like reef inspired. I think that would be really cool because then you could um, use those extra colors to draw in colors from like fish. Whereas indigo ink, I'm automatically thinking like octopuses. I'm thinking like the color of squid ink, um, different things like that. That's where my mind is going when I hear indigo ink. And the inside of this palette just doesn't reflect that. On top of that, I just feel like it's a bit of a mishmash of colors. When I look at this color story, nothing really jumps out at me in terms of pairings of colors. And it's just a bit confusing. It's a bit lost. <sighs> Next, we have the Made by Mitchell Milk Collection. And I just, I can't get behind this palette with the cow print. The cow print for me, it just makes it look like a bit of a joke. And then I didn't hear great things about the formula on this palette either. I watched some reviews of people that reviewed the first two palettes from him and gave like the first two palettes praises to like high heels. Um, watched those many praises. And then I watched a review on this palette and people said it just didn't live up to like the praise that the first palette got. So Oh, that's a little bit disappointing. And I just, like I said, I can't get behind this like print that he's put behind the eyeshadows. For me, it's really distracting. I just don't like it when palettes do this. I prefer like a solid color, even if it's like black or white. I think that's great when it's just one solid color behind there. And if it's like a solid kind of matte or low sheen color, I think that's even better because it doesn't, it doesn't distract you away from 
the eyeshadow colors and it doesn't kind of throw the hues of the colors off for your eyes it doesn't play with like the saturation or anything like that when it's just one solid block color behind there so i don't like it when palettes do this i think the color story is it's a little bit boring and a little bit lost i think some of the shimmers actually look really nice in this palette they do look a little bit chunky few duochromes in there but they do look chunky um yeah i'm just a little bit lost or a little bit at a loss with this eyeshadow color story it seems like kind of the top two rows are designed to be somewhat of a neutral palette together the middle row is like a blue color story and then the bottom two are a little bit all over the place they're quite like reddy pinky purpley it's a little bit of a mishmash bit all over the place and i just i think the cow print is it's not for me i just think it's a little bit ugly then we move on to some eyeshadow palettes that i just think are a little bit scary <laughs> this is the collaboration with uh, nyx cosmetics and money heist don't get me wrong i've heard really great things about the series on netflix I personally, I think I've only watched like half an episode and I got a little bit distracted and I stopped watching it. Um, but I just think the palette they have with the face on it, I know that's essentially like the logo of the series, but for me, I just find it a little bit creepy. Um, the color story itself looks a bit muted. You could probably get some nice everyday looks out of it, but I just... I don't know the the little kind of like cartoon face for me with its eyes I think that I would probably crap my pants if I opened my drawer up and I saw saw this staring back at me first thing in the morning I just think I don't know I surely they could have done something else I know that this is the logo but maybe they could have put the face in the imprints in the pan as opposed to the front of the palette being a full face it's just a little bit much. Um, speaking of faces, we're kind of diverting a little bit away from eyeshadow palettes, but it is still a palette nonetheless. So we're moving on to the Luna Beauty Outer Dimension Collection. This has the Outer Dimension face palette in it, and I find this palette so creepy. <laughs> I don't love the design of the palette. It's kind of designed as an all-in-one face palette. There's only one shade or one... Um, version of the palette so it's essentially kind of designed to cover multiple skin tones and we all know that that doesn't really happen all that often a lot of the times mo most people will be not using majority of the palette because it just won't work for their skin tone so that in general I think is a little bit of a fail but the front of the palette is like this moon face but it's 3d it reminds me of the Nikita Dragon, Nikita, Nikita Dragon, I can't remember, the um, Dragon Beauty uh, face palette where it had Nikita like coming out of it, 3D, looked like she was like a plastic doll. I don't like 3D palettes and it's a little bit weird having a moon face on it and I'm just not a great lover of it. I don't like the design of the palette. I think that these kind of all-in-one contour face palettes are very much a thing of the past. I just think they died a natural death way back. From 2010 onwards, it kind of died a natural death. After that, 2015, around that time, I thought that it died a natural death. Obviously didn't. Manny's trying to bring it back. I don't think it was all that successful. That was the last palette. As I said at the start of the video, this video was all in good fun. It wasn't meant to offend anyone. It was just having a bit of fun roasting some ugly eyeshadow palettes and face palettes that came out this year. Let me know down in the comments box what palettes are on your list of the ugliest palettes of 2021. I would love to know down in the comments there. While you're down there, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy me roasting ugly eyeshadow palettes. Also, I hope you would consider subscribing down below if you do want to keep up to date on my future content. That's it with this video, beautiful. I hope that you are having an absolutely fantastic day. I hope that you are staying safe and healthy and looking after yourself. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, beautiful.